We've got open air baseball for you on the show. It's the San Diego Padres taking on the Miami Marlins. And now, and we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. Just about set to go now. And on the hill here today, Jesus Lazardo. What's the scouting report on him? Well, I'm interested to see how he utilizes his sinker to this lineup, Boog. You know, it's not necessarily his go-to primary pitch, but he does mix it in when he needs it. He's just got to make sure that it's not flat. Otherwise, it's going to get hit hard. So look for him to throw it up there when he needs a big double play, a ground ball, something like that to get out of an inning, change it up for a hitter. Also, get those hitters looking down so that it opens up the top of the strike zone, especially late in and at bat. Xander Bogarts in the box here. Let's that one go for a ball. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Timing on the swing was good able to shoot the ball up the middle didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked but that's a good approach paying off and the batter will be Fernando Tatis Jr. Snap throw to first Bogart dives back right through there for a strike Tatis a former all-star batting second in today's lineup and he was born in the Dominican Republic the pitch that one to first one at second plenty of time at first that's a double play for me that's one of the toughest double plays to turn on the infield the first baseman has to get inside create a throwing lane to hit that middle infielder to start the double play and then from there completing it back to first really good job all the way around now here's Jake Cronenworth splits the plate and that's strike one Two outs, bases empty. Swing and a high fly ball to left. De La Cruz under it. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the first, 0-0. Zero, zero. Back here in Miami, today's starting pitcher, you Darvish. Well, the hammer is in effect, and he sets it up so nicely because of the velocity on the fastball. We'll elevate that and then break you off when he's ahead in the count. What I love about him, you get into the later innings of the ball game, and the velocity seems to go up. Bottom of the first, Luis Arise stands in. And the pitch. You have to be creative pitching against bad ball hitters. You got to add some velocity, subtract at times. Just avoiding the heart of the plate isn't always going to be enough. Guys like this can hurt you with pitches you wouldn't expect him to swing at. Line to right, and that'll be a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. He was all over that one. Off the bat, that one registered at 105 miles per hour, man. That is smoking, and these days you hear it all the time, but the numbers just don't lie. If you can drive a ball like that, more often than not, you're picking up a knock. Here's Tim Anderson. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Arise. Gets his lead at first with nobody out. And that's off the inside edge. And one and one.
Righty delivers. Got him. And one away. And now the switch hitting first baseman Josh Bell. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. This one lifted in the air, left field. Profar has a beat on it. And there's two away. And time now for the Marlins lineup. The challenge for him today, Singy, elevating the baseball against this sinker baller that's on the mound. Yeah, that's the challenge, but it also might affect the way they approach base running in this one, Boog. You get a runner on first, you anticipate trajectory down, and when the ball's in the dirt with a good secondary lead, you break for second. So whether it's a stolen base or not, you stay out of the double play, get that runner in a scoring position, and that can help you put more runs on the board. B-I-D, ball in dirt. Two outs. That one's in there. That is strike two. Looks like he's just sizing him up there. Really good pitch to hit, but he took it all the way. Sometimes guys just want to set their timing later on in the game. That may be a pitch that he turns on. Missed inside with the curb. And a swing and a miss, and that's that. Marlins leave one, scoreless after one. Back here at Lone Depot Park, top of the second, Manny Machado up to the plate. And when you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. And a pitch. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. And another ball. This guy plays third base like he's a shortstop, and he welcomes the difficult play, can throw from so many different angles, and makes really tough plays look very easy. Two two now. In the air, pretty deep out to center field. Chisholm under it. And there's one down. When you look at the ability to save runs defensively, but then also put runs up on the scoreboard, that's the kind of player that every championship team needs to have. Next to hit, Ha Sung Kim. Right through there for a strike. That one not close, and it's a ball and a strike. Dave Lawrence behind the plate today, consistent and pretty accurate with the balls and strikes. Yeah, he's one of those guys, Spook, that just keeps the game moving. Nothing overly unique about the strike zone that he calls, and as a result, he's appreciated by both sides. And that one is inside. Definitely a swing and miss slider down and in. He finished that really well. Just couldn't get him to offer at it. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Settles underneath it. Puts it away for the out. And there are two outs. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. 
Luis Campusano stands in with two away as he takes a ball. To third, Berger. Tosses to first, and that is the inning. Nothing doing there for the Friars. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. And we're back. We head to the bottom of the second. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. Darvish back to work. High fly ball down the left field line. This looks like extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. And one pitch into the inning. It's a leadoff double. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle. Allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer. And he hit the ball on the screws. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Now the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. And a foul ball. Well, here's an interesting stat on Darvish. He has more than 100 wins in his big league career. The only Japanese-born pitcher with more wins is Hideo Nomo, my former teammate. Man, it's second. Ball, that's it. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. No outs, runner on second. On the ground, out to short. Whips it across. That's one out the bottom of the second. So up next, Jesus Sanchez. Sliced hard, but foul down the left side. Right into the plate. Nope. He swings and drives one out to deep left field. Profar going back. And that one is gone. A laser to left. And just like that, they're out front. It's 2-0. Man, he just barely got that one out of here, and you've got to love the effort and left to try and bring it back. He had a good shot at it, just couldn't quite pull it off. It would have been a stunner if he did. Abasail Garcia up to the plate. In there at the knees. That's strike one. Two runs across in the inning. Bottom half of inning number two. The 0 1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. One ball, two strikes. And another ball. That one ran inside, almost got him. Straighten him up a little bit. Still only one out here in the inning. Got it by him for the K. Batting none. Nick Fortes, the next up for the Marlins. Right through there for a strike.
And he deals. And that one off the outside edge. Boots it. But they get the out at first, and that'll do it for the inning. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. It's now a 2-0 ball game. Top half of the third inning. Now batting Jerickson Profar. The wind and the pitch. That one found hard the other way. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. That one misses. One and one. In the air, out towards right center. And it drops in, but a good job to keep it in front. Now, here is Matthew Batten. Just missed. And it goes just foul. Good zip on that fastball at the bottom of the zone. If he's there all day, it's going to be a tough one for the hitters. And he swings and lifts one to deep center field. Reaching for it and brings it in. Man, that's one of those at-bats where you have to remind yourself it's about the process. He did everything right right there. Nothing to show for it. But in your mind, you have to convince yourself that it was a very good at-bat. Jackson Merrill, the next to hit. And that one hammered. Gone. Into the second deck it goes. And they throw a pair on the board. It's 2-2. He only needed one swing to square it up. Not wasting any time in that at bat, Boog. Aggressive, and it paid off. With this pitcher's velocity, a changeup is really a break for a hitter. He got a BP fastball, didn't move a whole lot, and he absolutely tattooed it. So the batting order turns over. Next for the Padres, Xander Bogarts. Right through there for a strike. Bogarts, who wears that number two on his back for his idol, Derek Jeter. Tied up here in the early going. Ground ball right side. A dive. He's got it from his knees. The throw. And he gets him. Nicely done. Well, he looks so comfortable making that play. Dives, comes up with it. And then from one knee, like he's just playing catch with his kid. Nice throw across the diamond at first. Now it's Fernando Tatis Jr. Right through there for a strike. Base is empty, two away, but two runs are in. We're here in the top half of inning number three. That one outside, and that is ball one. And another ball. Tatis waits. That's off the mark. And now three and one. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. And that's ball four. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or an end of the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. Step off throw to first, and he's back in easily. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. Cronenworth in the box now as he looks at ball one. 
Second plate appearance of the day for him. Next pitch in for a strike. And now it's even one and one. And he hits a ground ball right side. Arise on to first. That takes care of Cronenworth. Third out, and that ends the frame. Two across on this San Diego homer. 2-2 Two -two game. And welcome back to the ballpark. Set for the bottom of the third. Now it's the Marlins leadoff hitter, Luis Arias. And here it comes. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Next offering is downstairs. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. Line drive, makes the catch for the out. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. So digging in, Tim Anderson. Caught looking his first time up. And takes low for ball one. One out, base is empty. That one finds the zone, and it's one and one. Swing and a ball popped up. Bogarts under it. Makes the grab. That's out number two. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Here's Josh Bell. Fly to left his first time. That one finds the zone. Going one. Two down, nobody on. And that's outside. Kicks and deals. Look out! And it hit him. He had him one, two, and he ends up hitting him with a pitch. So, man aboard. Here's the cleanup hitter for Miami. Jake Berger went down on strikes his first time through. A little bit low. And a foul ball. The pitch. Late swing fouled off. Well, he missed a hittable off-speed pitch right there. Not sure exactly what the timing. Sometimes you get a backup breaking ball. You're expecting it to make its move at the end. It never does. And you're tied up. That misses the zone. Two and two. Battling here as he fouls it away. You're always having a tough time getting a pitch by him. As a hitter, you feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. Got him swinging. One left for Miami. Score remains 2-2. Two -two.
start of the fourth. And now it's Manny Machado. Lazardo back to work. Machado, multi time all star, a member of the 1000 hit club, a former first round pick back in 2010. And that one fouled off. Kicks and fires. Wow, that's 89 on the gun, and it's a changeup. It's like good hitting if you're looking for it, but because of the speed differential between the fastball and that pitch, really hard for a hitter to get on time with it. Gets a piece and stays alive. And now the lefty. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Around first, heading for two. And he's got a leadoff double in the fourth. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. I love the approach he had right there with that pitch. Not trying to do too much, but still looking to drive it. And that's exactly what he's able to do into the opposite field gap for the double. Go ahead, run on base. Ha Sung Kim, the next up for the Padres. He's 0 for 1. Out towards right center. That's well struck. Sanchez on the run. And it hops over the wall for an automatic double. A run comes in on the play. He puts a great swing on that pitch and drives home the run. And that was always going to be a double, but the bounce over the wall just took the guesswork out of it right away. It was a nice swing. Luis Campusano digs in now grounded out his first time and there's a strike good heater at 98 and a big swing and a miss. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Kim stands at second with no outs. And that's off the inside edge. It's a ball and two strikes. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A-B going. Fights that one away, still one and two. Man at second. Breaking ball inside. And the count's even at two. The pitch. And a foul ball, he stays alive. The pitch. He goes down looking. That was a pretty funny bat right there, but you kind of hate to see a long battle like that end on a questionable call. I think he was right in letting it go. Frustrating result after he fought so hard at the plate. Here's the switch hitting left fielder Jerickson Pro Far. Singled and scored. Runner takes off for third. Pitch in for a strike. Throw to third. Save. That wasn't close. When a guy's got that kind of lead at second base, somebody's got to call a timeout. Pitcher's got to step off. The catcher's got to ask the ump for time or something. You can't let him get out that far when you don't have a good thrower behind the plate. He's going to steal third almost standing up. That's a really good job of being aggressive by the base runner. And a pitch. On the ground to third. Slings to first. Rudder scores, though. That's a little insurance, and the lead is two. So important to really lock in on an at bat like this. It seems easy with the infield back, but you've got to make sure you put the ball in play. Put it on the ground, brought that run in. Matthew Batten, the next up for the Padres. 0 for 1 so far. That's in there, and that is strike one. Two down, nobody on. Top half of inning number four. And now one and two. Oh. 
Wouldn't chase that time. Two outs. And they'll do it again. Two two down. Ground ball left side. Whips it to first. Third out. So they get a couple of runs on two hits. No errors and no one left on. And midway in the fourth it's the Padres four and the Marlins two. Ready to go, bottom four. And now for the Marlins, Jazz Jism Jr. And the right hander back to work. Hit hard, that gets through. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. Brian De La Cruz, the next up for the Marlins. Right through there for a strike. Well, the offense has gotten going, and a pitcher wants to go out there, have a real quick inning, get those guys back into the dugout so those bats can stay hot. And a pitch. And there's a strike. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Maybe a two ball, five, four, three, and they turn the double play. As a former player, watching five, four, three double plays brings back some adrenaline. It's such an exciting play, and it's always a great reminder of baseball being such a team sport. And up next for Miami, Jesus Sanchez. Swinging a foul over the screen and back out of play. The 0 1. Checks his swing, appeal to third, and that's a swing, according to umpire Matthew Ross. Foul ball, it stays nothing in two. Right hander kicks deals. Hard hit left side. Throws across the diamond. That's the third out. Inning over. Back here in Miami, and now Jackson Merrill. Jackson Merrill. As the lefty gets to work. And a foul ball. You know, these Padres doing a good job of simply getting the bat on the ball in this game, and the numbers back that up. One thing that really stands out to me is how they've only struck out one time. That's good discipline right there, and on top of it, they're producing more than a hit per inning. Swings and misses, and there's one down. And he'll be beating himself up on the way back to the dugout. Got a pitch to hit and just couldn't get to it. I think that slider really caught way more of the plate than it was supposed to. Xander to the plate now. He played in the Soul Series to open the 2024 season. Such a cool experience for both teams, Boog. For Bogarts, it was the fifth country he's played in since joining Major League Baseball. He had the chance to play in the London Series with the Red Sox in 2019 and in the Mexico City Series with the Padres in 2023. Next pitch is outside. All those numbers mean this offense is really making the defense work by just putting the ball into play. Anything can happen at that point. Takes it in for the out. Man, he really turned on that one. Absolutely ripped it towards third, but quick cat-like reflexes down there at the hot corner to bring it down. 
Two outs, base is empty. Fernando Tatis Jr., the next up for the Padres. Foul ball there. This is important. If he can go one, two, three here, will be a very positive sign for him and for his team. Now the 0-1. High fly ball, pretty well struck out towards right center. That's back there. Going gone. A massive home run. It's 5-2. That one just sounded different. And might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the booth. Always scary for a pitcher when a guy can take a fastball down the middle and hit it to the opposite field. No holes in a swing like that, and that time that ball was hit hard. Base is empty with two away. Now the batter now, Jake Cronenworth. That clips the corner. One run across in the frame so far, and we're at the top of the fifth. Fly ball down the line. De La Cruz settles under it, corrals it, and that is that. The Padres get one in the inning with a solo blast. It's 5-2. Back here at Lone Depot Park, bottom of the inning. Now here's the Marlins DH, Abasail Garcia. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. Throw over to Cronenworth, and the leadoff man set down in their half of the fifth. The catcher number four, Nick Fortes. Nick Fortes, the next up for the Marlins. 0 for 1, he grounded out in his first at bat. And that's off the inside edge. And it's 1 and 0. Base is empty, 1 away. Last half of inning number 5. So a foul ball makes it one and two. And that's downstairs and outside. The punch out there. Two gone now. Back to the top of the lineup and at the plate for Miami, Luis Arias. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Right through there for a strike. Swing and a ball lined out towards center and puts the squeeze on that one. And that is the third out of the inning. And one, two, three go the Marlins. And the deficit remains 5 2. So the Marlins go with a new arm, number 53. Just trying to keep this one close here. And this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. Now Machado up here, one for two. 
With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. Got it started a little too early, strike one. He got away with one there, but he knows he can't go into that spot very often against a guy like this. That's the third, Berger. Sends it across to first, and that's one out as they get the leadoff hitter in the sixth. Deceptive slider right there, stayed in the tunnel a long time, got that hitter out front, rolled over it, put it on the ground. Ha Sung Kim, the next up for the Padres. And that's in there for strike one. Well, Kim is one of those players that it's just hard to take your eyes off of him, man. Not many players in the 2023 World Baseball Classic had more fun than he did. He hit a grand slam and a win against China, and earlier in the tournament had a two-homer game, delivered some special moments for Korea. Base is empty one away, and we're the top half of the sixth. The 0-2. Inside just missed. It's a good take. Hit on the ground to the right side. Arise on to first. Two quick outs to open the top of the sixth. Two outs, bases empty. Luis Campusano will hit next. And first offering is fouled off. And a base hit into right. So a two out knock keeps the inning alive. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. Profar climbs in on that left side. Ball one there. Campusano off of first with two away. And another ball. Oh, he's really working him away, this at bat. Sometimes take a little bit off velocity. Try to get a rollover, something on the ground. Stay away from that big hole on the right side of the infield. 2 0. -oh. Misses just off the outside edge. I think that was a strike. Well, I would expect in this 3 0 count, you're taking all the way. See if they'll walk you. And the righty deals. There's the strike. And there's a foul ball. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. And the right-hander deals. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Payoff pitch. Hot shot to third. On to first, and the inning is over. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one left. Two, three, four, due up in the home half of the sixth. It's the Padres five and the Marlins two. And we're back. John Chompy with Chris Singleton in the booth and leading off the bottom of the sixth, Tim Anderson. Anderson. The right-hander back to work. Swing and a base hit. Waste no time there. That can be a really tough pitch to handle, a front door breaking ball, but he did a great job staying in there, keeping that front shoulder closed. He didn't spit off the ball and hook it foul, which happened so many times. Josh Bell at the plate now.
First pitch misses. Now this team is definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. And now it's even up. Bounce to the left side. Into the outfield base hit. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Back-to-back -back singles. Not much to this one other than just a willingness to go the other way and put the ball in play. That's a team to bat right there. Nice job of staying back and letting the ball get deep. And maybe they've got something going here. Trying to get back into this one. Jake Berger, the next up for the Marlins. Who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Riding to the plate. Struggled a little bit in this one. Couple of strikeouts earlier, but doing a much better job in this at bat to get ahead and find a good hitter's count at 2-0. Righty delivers. Activity in the bullpen for San Diego. Jeremiah Estrada, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. Cosgrove, the lefty, warming up as well. And a 2-1 on the way. And that one fouled off. The 2-2 two -two now. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Grounder might be two. Feeds to second, out there. And two. In time to first for the double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play, but right there, very well done. And now the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Pitch misses there, and that's ball one. Two outs. That one fouled off. Loves it on the dive, the throw, and that's a great play for the out. This guy's anticipation is off the charts. Don't see many shortstops better than that. Great job to complete the play and end the inning. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Anthony Bender. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. And now Matthew Batten. The designated hitter, Matthew Batten. The wind of the pitch. And ball one. Bender, a righty that throws with power. He features a sinker, a slider, a changeup, and he works in a four-seamer. Chisholm makes the grab one away. The center field, number three, Jackson Merrill. Here's the center fielder, Jackson Merrill. His two-run homer back in the third was an important swing of the bat in this one. Yeah, there's no doubt he helped set the tone fairly early and certainly part of the reason why they've got the lead right now. And downstairs, signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. Number 62 appears to be getting ready. And I'm sure he's feeling some nerves. This would be his major league debut. Weathers getting cranked up as well.
Hey, he doubled up on the off speed there. We talk about the power fastball, but he's working a little differently here. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. So that will bring up the top of the order with one away. The batter number two. Base. Here's Xander Bogarts. Xander. One for three. Out in front and foul to the left side. And the pitch. Rolled to short. Possible two ball. Oh, can't pick it up cleanly, but plenty of time to recover, and that's the second out. Fernando Tatis Jr. to hit here. He's already homered in this game. Hit in the air, left field, moving under it. He's got it, and that is out number three. Padres leave one, and it remains 5-2. Bottom of the seventh. Here's the left fielder, Brian De La Cruz. The Marlins in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the laid off man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. Darvish back to work. Swings through that one out in front that time. Pretty impressive. We haven't seen that pitch from him much, but he's got a really good feel when he throws it. Up the middle. Now the throw to first on the run. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. Good arm side run to that same side hitter right there. Very difficult to put that ball in the air or get through it. Just pours in on the hands. Jesus Sanchez, the next up for the Marlins. He's already homered here in this one. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. And a good eye there. The fish trailing by three here at the bottom of the seven. And another ball. One down, base is empty. Misses outside, three and one now. And there's ball four. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. And next is the designated hitter, Avasail Garcia. That's inside. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. That one down the line and foul ball. The pitch keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Sanchez at first, one gone. In the air, left field. Fair ball. Headed for the plate. He scores, and it's now a two-run game. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. That does it for you, Darvish. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound.
Jeremiah Estrada gets handed the rock out of the pen. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Man at second with one away. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. That's out to center field. And that'll fall for a base hit. Into third now. So runners at the corners and one out. Well, just a nice job coming through in a pretty high leverage spot right there. When you flare a ball out behind second base, it's really a tough spot for anyone to get to. And you're never trying to do that as a hitter. But when you do, I tell you what, you're yelling at it the entire way to get down. Arise. Stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball two. Runners are at the corners, one away. That one finds the zone. Now two balls and a strike. Try to get him to chase on the change up that time. Tim Anderson next to hit for the Marlins. Two on one out. Into center. Merrill ranging back. He's got it. Runner tags for home. A big run scores on the sack fly. And it's now 5-4. There you go. Nice little RBI there. It's a great at bat. Got the job done. Tim Anderson, the next up for the Marlins. Right now, they're looking for something hit hard into the gaps. Give them an opportunity with two outs to score that run from first. Pitch misses inside. Ball one. Curveball kind of backed up on him there. I think it just slid out of the hand a little bit too soon. Two outs. Swings through that one for strike one. Man, he was really tardy on that fastball. Great job of setting him up by throwing the curveball. Add some velocity to it on the next pitch. Can't catch up. Right-handed reliever. In the air, out to center. Merrill under it. Pulls it down, and he makes the catch. That is the inning. They put two on the board with a couple of hits, no errors, and one left. We look ahead to inning number eight. It's the Padres five and the Marlins four. Back here in Miami, and now Jake Cronenworth. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. The pitch. That one's in there, and the count one and one. And I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed, it makes the whole team that much better. Can't glove it cleanly. And he's going to make it to first. And we'll see how they score it. Pretty much gifted a leadoff base runner right there. And as an offense, this is where you really want to take advantage. Apply some pressure this inning. Make that error hurt. Here's Manny Machado now. Right through there for a strike. What about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. In there at the knees. 
Nobody out. Runner at first. And down on strikes he goes. Machado is gone and there's one away. No, that was a pretty poor at bat. He just never got the bat off of his shoulder. I mean, you got to go up there looking to swing at some point, especially once you're down 0-2. And at that point, make an adjustment, look to put the ball in play if it's anywhere close. And I'm just not sure what the plan was there. Ha Sung Kim getting ready to hit. That one's in there, 0 and 1. There's a strike. Two really good back-to-back -back sliders. Now in an 0-2 count. He's feeling real confident about finishing this hitter off. He can go anywhere he wants. Way inside. One ball, two strikes, yeah. Cronenworth over at first with one away. Three. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Stepping in for San Diego, Luis Campusano. And he beats it. He's safe. Jerks and Profar, the next up for the Padres. And the first pitch misses for ball one. First and second, two down, and we're in the top of the eighth. Smoked on the ground a second. Over to Anderson. That ends the inning as they squander a chance to pick up some insurance. Padres leave a pair. They lead at 5 4. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Aniel De Los Santos. These are the spots relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. So digging in, Josh Bell. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. And the pitch. Just missed. Bullpen action for the Padres. Robert Suarez. The closer is getting ready and perhaps looking at a long save opportunity here. Number one, warming up as well. And a base hit on the line. That's back-to-back -back singles for him. That can be a dangerous pitch if you don't get it inside enough because as a hitter, you see it coming across the plate the whole way. No problem handling it and putting a good swing on it that time. No outs. Runner at first. Here's the third baseman, Jake Berger. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. And fouled off. Not even close there. One ball, one strike. Trying to hold a one-run lead here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. That one's in there. And the count, one and two. And he deals. And a swing and a miss. And that's the first out. 
Well, they've had a great plan of attack for him tonight. I mean, finding all the holes in his swing and his approach, just frustrating for him up there. You strike out a guy three times in a game, I think that guy's got to go back and really study some video with his hitting coach, figure out how they're beating him, make this adjustment really quick because word will get around the league in a hurry. And now the center fielder, Jazz Chisholm Jr. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. One run game, one out, one on. And strike two. Ground ball could be two. Machado to second, and that's two. Poetry in motion there as the second baseman turns the double play. Nice throw to first, and that's the way to end the inning. We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, number 62. Well, one run game leading off Matthew Batten. And here it comes. Fastball for a strike. That's in there, and it's 0 and 2. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches down in 0 2 hole. He's going to have to battle, hope he gets a mistake. Kicks and deals. Lifted in the air right center field. Chisholm giving chase. Nice grab on the run. And there's one down. The center field, number three. Jackson Merrill the next up for the Padres. First pitch just misses. One run game here in the top of the ninth. And another ball. Here comes a pitch. Outside low, and it's 3 0. And fires in a fastball at 95. The 3 1. Swing it a foul straight back. The wide to kick the pitch. Left field way back there. De La Cruz going back and gone. Another homer. His second home run of the game. It's 6 4. Those are the at-bats that leave pitchers exhausted. He had to throw a lot of pitches and still gave up the long ball. That's a bad combo. That's the exact definition of hitting the ball where it's pitched, taking that outside fastball and driving it the opposite way out of the ballpark. You want to bottle that type of approach. Bogarts in the box now. No balls and a strike. On the ground to the left. And that one finds its way through. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Man, he just absolutely turned on that one, ripped it down the line. Nice job of staying in his mechanics. So, man, aboard one down, and it's Tatis at the plate. And a strike on the outside edge. pitch 
That's in there. 0 oh, 2 now. Quickly into an 0 2 count. Both pitches were down in the zone. I think you set your sights a little bit higher because you'll have a tendency to chase if you look down in that area. This one in the air center field. Chisholm moving under this one. Hauls it in for the out. Two down. Throw and it gets away. Now batting the first baseman, Jake Cronenworth. Man at first, Jake Cronenworth, the next up for the Padres. Check on the runner. Bogart dives back. And the first pitch misses for ball one. One run across in the frame so far here at the top of the ninth. Here's a one one. That's a bullet, but it goes foul. At the belt and fires. In the air, right side of the infield. Arise, sprinting for this one. Makes a nice grab at a full sprint. And that'll do it. But the Padres add to the lead on a solo homer. It's a two run lead now at 6 4. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. We're back, and on the mound is the closer, Robert Suarez. Save opportunity for him right here, and he's their guy. Time to lock this one down and get out of here with the W. And now for the Marlins, Brian De La Cruz. 0 for 3 with three ground outs. Hey, look, we'll see how it factors in. I just can't emphasize how much that insurance run in the top of the ninth means. I mean, just such a big difference mentally when you're chasing two runs instead of one. Kicks and fires. There's the strike of the knees. There's the swing and a miss. He has a tendency to chase out of the zone, and that slider that's down, that's one of his money pitches to get that swing and miss. Just outside. The count now two and two, facing a closer that delivers big time velocity. Well, normally against a big arm with this kind of velocity, you look for the ball down because the fastball up is a little hard to catch up to, but he's shown really good plate discipline by not offering at that last pitch down. Well, that right there is what you want to see out of your closer. Come in and close the door, cancel any hope that that opponent has in making some type of comeback in the ball game. Tell you what, that helps him settle in, and that helps everybody else relax a little bit to get these other two outs. The 1-0. Found back our way, and that's out of play. Base is empty, one away. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. So a foul ball makes it one and two. The pitch. And that's a little bit high. Two and two. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Battling here as he fouls it away. the pitch fouls that off to the left and we'll do it again now he's desperately looking for that swing and miss he's gonna have to just change speeds a little bit try to move it around create just a little bit of illusion at the end calls it in two away well baseball can be cruel can it I mean sometimes it gives and sometimes it takes away he did everything right on that swing but he's got nothing to show for it so they're down to their final out and now the D.H. of Asayil Garcia. In there for strike one. One's the count.
Breaking ball through there for a strike. Now just a cement mixer slider right there. It's a great pitch to hit if you can recognize it early and jump on it. Next offering way off the plate. Rarely will you see a pitcher just waste a pitch like that. The batter wasn't even tempted to swing. Every pitch needs to have a purpose so that it can set up a following pitch to help you get that out. Hit to right and that should do it. Ball game. Sometimes road trips can be tough. You're away from your family, but when you can win, silence that opposing crowd. It makes things just a little bit better. It makes the road trip just a little bit shorter. And this one ends with a final score of 6-4. to four. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.